Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's that me all the people who aren't subscribed to my channel I request you all to click that subscribe button if you are willing to enter a world where an at me is a piece of cake so without further ado let's talk about today's topic so our today's topic will begin with the sagittal tracing or vertical tracing of your peritoneum the sagittal section of your body is taken you're viewing it from the side you are going to we are basically going to talk about the peritoneal reflection how you'll see it when you cut the abdomen from the side so this is the abdominal cavity let me just quickly uh, give you a intro to what these organs are this is your liver obviously lying closest to the diaphragm right and then we have below the liver this is the stomach this is the transverse colon this is the pancreas lying more close to the posterior abdominal wall this is your small intestine and going down these are the pelvic organs beginning with the bladder in case of females there's the uterus behind the posterior most is the rectum right so i want you all to get a copy out and draw with me because this reflection of peritoneum can get difficult once seen as an overall diagram but when you draw it it gets super easy so guys begin with here first peritoneum is extending from here it's coming down to line the anterior abdominal wall once it reaches close to the pelvic cavity i've already told you that your parietal peritoneum will line the inner surface of the pel pelvic cavity so from here it won't go below rather it will go above so that inner surface can be lined just above the bladder in case of males this uterus will not be present so the rectum will be immediate after the bladder so here a pouch is formed and then going on top of the uterus behind it and over the rectum another pouch is formed all right remember these pouches because we're going to talk about them soon so we're just going to take this peritoneum to the posterior abdominal wall and here is a small intestine and we've talked about the word mesentery we all know a fold of peritoneum comes to cover the small intestine up and it forms here your covering of the small intestine suspended via a mesentery of the small intestine from here it goes to the pancreas all right pancreas is a retroperitoneal organ that's why you can see it won't have a mesentery it will be close to the posterior abdominal wall let's stop this reflection of peritoneum right here let's bring another layer of the peritoneum from here it goes and you can see that liver has an area which is known as the bare area of the liver where there will be no peritoneum on it otherwise liver is an intraperitoneal organ but only in the case of the bare area there will be no peritoneum covering it so from here bringing this peritoneum down beneath the liver lining the liver beneath and then going all the way down to the stomach i hope you remember what this fold is that is going from the liver to the stomach and then lining the stomach obviously it becomes the visceral peritoneum when it's lining these organs when it's lining the wall it's the parietal peritoneum and from the stomach to the transverse colon is not going to be a simple straight pathway rather it will be a little bit of an elongated pathway we all know why because this will be the greater momentum and from the transverse colon we go all the way back and connect it to that layer we initially drew the entire area that we have currently covered this entire sac or cavity that is made this is what is known as the greater sac now let's talk about what the lesser sac is let's begin a reflection of peritoneum from behind the area let's take it from the liver let's cover the liver up and let's take it down from the liver to the stomach draw this fold of peritoneum we all know what that becomes lesser momentum and cover the posterior surface of the stomach and from the stomach again this fold goes down and up again to the transverse colon and then it lines the transverse colon now this is the transverse mesocolon which is attached to the pancreas and finally to the pancreas it goes and here's a circle completed this area that i just enclosed is the lesser sac and the topic of today large peritoneal fold running from the stomach to the liver is known as the lesser omentum then the fold of omentum running from the greater curvature of the stomach and folding upon itself with the four layers is known as the greater omentum all right and other things means this is the transverse mesocolon this is the mesentery and what are these pouches the pouch that is formed between the bladder and the uterus this is the vesico uterine pouch between the uterus and the rectum is known as the recto uterine pouch all right there is a connection between the greater and the lesser sac 
This is located somewhere around here. Yes, it lies behind the free right margin of the lesser omentum. This is known as the epiploic foramen. Even that is going to be discussed in our topic today. All right. So I hope this diagram makes sense to you. Now let's go ahead and begin the first topic, the greater omentum. All right. So what is the greater momentum? I think by looking over here, it gets quite simple that greater momentum is a large peritoneal fold extending from the greater curvature of the stomach, folding upon itself and covering the entire intestine and then going up again and getting attached to, to the transverse colon. Also, it gets attached to the anterior surface of the pancreas, right? So the greater momentum consists of how many layers of peritoneum? This is the first layer. This is the second layer. This is the third layer. This is the fourth layer. So that's what's so special about this greater momentum that it has four layers, unlike the lesser momentum, which has only two layers, right? So it is quite obvious that the first layer is what becomes the fourth layer and the second layer is what becomes the third layer. All right. And one more important thing is mostly the second and third layer get obliterated uh, up to the point uh, 2.5 centimeter below the greater curvature of the stomach up to that area. Let's talk about the contents of the greater momentum. Uh, nothing much, just between the first and second layer, the gastroepiploic vessel and a stomos between the first and second layers of the greater momentum. And the second thing is that it is a storehouse of fat. Its major content is fat. It is a policeman of the abdomen, which I've discussed in my previous videos. And the fact that it has a lot of macrophages, hence you'll see milky spots on your greater momentum. So that was all about the greater momentum. Let's talk about the lesser momentum now. So what is the lesser momentum? The lesser momentum is that peritoneal fold which runs from the lesser curvature of the stomach plus the duodenum. So guys, I just want you to know a little part of the duodenum also uh, is involved in giving attachment to the lesser momentum. So some part of the beginning of the duodenum and the stomach runs up to the liver. So what's important about the lesser momentum is its attachments. So below it is attached to the lesser curvature of the stomach and to some part of the beginning of the duodenum and above it goes to attach to the liver. But what part of the liver does it attach to? This line of attachment to the liver is in the form of an inverted L-shaped. The vertical limb is basically where the fissure for the ligamentum venosum lies in the liver and this horizontal limb right here is more the attachment of the lesser momentum to the margins of the porta hepatis. What are the contents of the lesser momentum? Uh, in the lesser momentum lies, I just want you to know one thing and I want you to remember one thing that the porta hepatis is very important structure for a reason because the porta hepatis contains the happy birthday structures. Remember that. Yes, quite a funny mnemonic, but this will help you. The hepatic artery or the proper hepatic artery. P is for the portal vein and BD is the bile duct. All right. These are the important happy birthday structures of your porta hepatis. Yes, that mnemonic right there. Do not forget it. Right. So the contents of the right free margin of the lesser momentum are the structures that are contained within the porta hepatis. Why? Because obviously when the lesser momentum is going to attach to the liver area, obviously it's taking with it all these vessels towards the liver. Right. So here I'll just quickly draw how the lesser momentum exactly looks like. So here's the stomach and here's the two centimeter beginning of the duodenum, right? And here is the liver, the L-shaped, inverted L-shaped part of the liver. So from here, you're taking this entire area and you're going all the way to attach over here. This is a lesser momentum. The contents of the lesser momentum, as I mentioned earlier, are the porta hepatis. Basically, here you can see that the right margin of this lesser momentum is quite free. You can actually, when you perform surgeries, you can actually see this margin happen, all right? So this right free margin is where the contents of the porta hepatis are running in. And what are those contents? I just mentioned the happy birthday structure along with some lymph nodes and some hepatic plexus of nerves. Over the lesser curvature, there are some contents. These are the right gastric and the left gastric vessels along with some gastric group of lymph nodes. All right? So these are the contents of the lesser momentum. The part of the lesser momentum that extends from this lesser curvature of the stomach to the liver is known as the, what do you think it would be known as? Obviously the hepatogastric ligament. And the part between the duodenum and the liver is known as the hepatoduodenal ligament. This is the lesser momentum and it's divided into these two parts. These two can also be known as ligaments as we've also talked about the fact that uh, between two organs, a peritoneal fold is usually a ligament. Don't forget that the right margin of the lesser momentum is free. And behind this right margin of the lesser momentum is where the epiploic foramen lies exactly here because 
from here there is a communication between the greater sac which is lying anterior to the stomach and the lesser sac that goes behind the stomach so here let's talk about the topic of epiploic foramen it's also known as the foramen of winslow this foramen is located at the t12 vertebra level and behind the free right margin of the lesser omentum let's talk about the boundaries of this epiploic foramen anteriorly will be the free right margin of the lesser omentum so the contents of that will be the anterior boundary of the epiploic foramen which i just mentioned these structures posteriorly will lie the t12 vertebra obviously and another very important structure the inferior vena cava the inferior vena cava is mostly in the posterior abdominal wall almost right about here superiorly is the caudate process of the liver and inferiorly is the first part of the duodenum because if you remember the most rightmost part of the uh, lesser omentum was actually coming from the duodenum so i hope that makes sense so now let's talk about the lesser sac it is an area of bursa because uh, the na other name of the lesser sac is also the omental bursa it is a large recess of the peritoneal cavity which is situated behind what what do you what do you see here the liver the stomach the lesser omentum and some part of it located behind the greater omentum all right so when we talk about the boundaries of the lesser sac it's going to be super easy if you can actually visualize this diagram so anterior boundaries are everything you can see over here what are these it is the peritoneum covering the caudate lobe of the liver over here you can see the posterior layer of what the lesser omentum going even below is the peritoneum covering your posterior surface of the stomach and finally what what layer of greater omentum is this first this was the first layer this is the second so just behind the second layer of the greater omentum that is the anterior boundary of the lesser sac right now let's talk about what are the posterior boundaries yes posterior boundaries some additional structures will be added that you cannot see here obviously a diagram cannot display every little piece of information but you guys do know that the lesser sac is kind of towards the left all right because the right side is the lesser omentum has a free margin so towards the left a little bit so mostly the structures of the left side will come posteriorly first let's begin with the structures we can already see what can we see this the posteriorly lies the third layer of the greater omentum the peritoneum covering the transverse colon and then the upper layer of the transverse mesocolon and then what do you see here is the pancreas or the peritoneum covering the pancreas and other structures over here obviously there is going to be the kidney lying on the posterior abdominal wall and the suprarenal gland even some part of the diaphragm is coming on the posterior relation another interesting thing about the lesser sac is that it is divided into parts mostly these parts are called as recesses there is the superior recess which lies behind the liver and the lesser omentum and then this is the inferior recess lying behind the stomach and the greater omentum all right and why are these recesses formed here i'll take a diagram from the bd churasia book you can see here that basically what happens is we are viewing the abdomen from the front from the anterior side but we've cut off the anterior abdominal wall and we're viewing the section the cut section all right so what we're seeing here why are these recesses formed essentially these recesses are formed because of two folds all right otherwise this lesser sac was about to be straight but due to these two folds the lesser sac is divided into these recesses these two folds are known as the right and the left gastropancreatic folds and these are formed by what the right fold is formed due to this this artery right here this is the common hepatic artery and the left fold is formed by left gastric artery so because of these two folds the recesses are formed the one above is the superior recess and the inferior inferior recess there's another additional recess known as the splenic recess it lies between the leno renal and the gastrosplenic ligaments so overall that was all you needed to know about the basis of the anatomy of your uh, lesser omentum greater omentum the uh, epiploic foramen and the lesser sac right so some clinicals that are important in this topic is that herniation can occur remember when we talked about the hernias we talked about the internal hernia and i said that i'll talk about the internal hernia later the internal hernia is when the within the abdominal cavity there is herniation uh, where the um, loops of intestine or any uh, content of the hernia enters area it's not allowed to enter so you can say that this epiploic foramen is a site of weakness so the intestine can actually enter through this epiploic foramen into the lesser sac and in order to remove this via surgery you cannot 
use the epiploic foramen to remove this. Why? Because the epiploic foramen is a site where their very important structures are located. Now, we talked about the inferior vena cava being its posterior boundary. Anteriorly, all these structures, they're very important. You cannot manipulate this area right here. So what the surgeons do is that they go through the greater omentum and in they go and take this uh, loop of hernia out. All right. Apart from that, uh, infection in the lesser sac usually occur when there is perforation in the posterior side of the stomach, like for instance, the gastric ulcer is being perforated uh, from the posterior wall, then obviously it will enter the lesser sac because we all know that the behind the stomach is where the lesser sac lies. So that is all you needed to know for today's topic. Thank you so much for watching and whoever hasn't subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate if you click that subscribe button, turn your post notifications on. Thank you so much for watching.